Hello, I'm your host, Nicolette Sewell, and I'm so happy you could join us on the premiere episode of The Domino Effect, where local nonprofit organization, the Legal Aid Society of the Orange County Bar Association, will sit with government officials to discuss pressing issues affecting the community. In this episode, the Legal Aid Society and Orange County District 5 Commissioner Emily Bonilla will have a discussion on consumer law, student loan debt, property issues, human trafficking, and domestic violence. Perpetual goodness goes a long way, and every person, company, and organization has the ability to positively impact Orange County's residents, making Central Florida a better place for all. We each have a responsibility to lend a helping hand when possible, continuing the cycle of growth and improvement in our communities. It's the domino effect. Hello, I'm Jay Mobley, Senior Staff Attorney at the Legal Aid Society. I'm joined this morning by Commissioner Emily Bonilla to discuss issues facing our community. Uh, the first issue that I wanted to talk about was consumer debt. So can you give us an idea of what you're seeing in the community as far as has the pandemic had an effect on the ability of folks to pay their debts? Well, there definitely has been a very interesting scenario that we're seeing. Um, people, well, I'll just say the younger generations are a lot smarter when it comes to debt. Um, and people don't realize that. They, they know how to save money. And it's because what they saw with their parents and the Great Recession, they sort of learned from that and they're from their parents. The problem, though, that they're facing is that they have high student loan debt. And that's where a lot of their issues are are coming in from and they have this student loan debt they have whatever extra money they have they try to save up they're roommating with people in order to save money but now with the pandemic they haven't had to pay their student loans so they had extra disposable income and what happened was that these these corporations that had bought up all these rental homes and apartment complexes saw that and now they're raising the rents on them. It's been happening for a while now, but now in this past year, it's just been extraordinary. And all whatever disposable income they had is gone because it's gone on those rents. We're seeing a lot of that at Legal Aid when folks call. Uh, rent increases are just exorbitant lately. And you're right, a lot of the properties that come on the market are being bought by investors. So that's making it harder for folks to buy a home because they're competing with companies that can pay cash. Um, so yeah, it is, it's very hard. Um, I think one of the things that we deal with a lot at Legal Aid is helping folks prioritize what bills to pay. Um, it's especially hard on seniors and those with limited or fixed incomes knowing what bills to pay, but we always want them to prioritize food and shelter and utilities over, say, a credit card payment or something like that. Um, what are you seeing with seniors and those on limited income? Is, is it a crunch there as well? Well, medical bills, it's what really hurts the seniors. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are still paying their student loans as well. Um, there's been a lot of issues with the student loan industry where you could pay your, some people are paying more than 20 years and they haven't had their student loans forgiven. Very little people have had their student loans forgiven after the 20 year mark. And that shouldn't have been happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a tough situation and we do see it a lot. Uh, one thing I don't think that folks realize is that a federal debt is something that can be taken out of your social security. So I do have a lot of seniors that are still they became delinquent, they're still paying on their student loans, they can be garnished, their wages, or their social security benefit can be offset and they take a portion of that. So it can be really tough with student loans. Um, that, is, that is definitely a problem that we see. Um, and the medical debt, that's another huge expense for a lot of people and can really hurt you. And I know that there's there's ways around it and there's programs but not too pe many people know about it. I mean, the hospital isn't going to tell you, well, if you can't pay, actually, you know, 
<laughs> go fill out, right down the hall and fill, fill out, out this form right. and you know all of it will be taken care of because the hospitals get lots of money from the government to pay for the bills of people who can't afford it. Yeah, I think that uh, education and knowing that help mm -hmm. is out there mm -hmm. is the first step, um, especially the hospitals and the funds that they get for, for people. Um, so folks should always ask, is there assistance available? Um, and again, when it comes to prioritizing payments, sometimes we have to leave the medical to the side or maybe the credit cards or even cut out the cable to keep the basic necessities of you know, food, water, and, and shelter. Mm -hmm. And that's becoming harder because of the ever-increasing uh, cost of rent, housing, and utilities. Everything seems to be going up. Yeah, and people's credit reports are very important, and I think that's where a lot of the struggles come in for people when they're making their decisions. Like, I don't want my credit to be ruined, so they try to prioritize the credit cards and the medical debt. Um, but I, and you could probably answer this, the medical debt, I don't believe that ruins your credits. I think they made no. some new laws where, right? They did. They passed some laws <clears throat> where the medical stuff is not going to affect your credit score. Um, folks are always scared of being sued by a creditor. And I think that uh, it's very important that folks realize it's not that scary of a process. Honestly, about 90% of the cases where you're sued by a creditor are won by default, meaning that nobody shows up, so they get the judgment against you. In Florida, if you're sued for debt collection, show up, file your answer. It may not affect the outcome, you may still get that judgment, but you're gonna know about it. You'll be offered opportunities to maybe make a smaller payment, much smaller than your credit card company may have been asking for to begin with. So you can settle the debt, maybe avoid the judgment. Um, if you find yourself in that situation, call Legal Aid. We can help you, we can give you tips, we have lawyers that can represent you in court. So don't be afraid of getting sued is the first thing. Show up, answer it, and we'll help you deal with it. Um, judgments are a bad thing. You don't really want a judgment against you, but we can deal with them. We can help people manage it and prioritize their bills. And as we were talking about before, you know, bankruptcy may be the best option for some folks to get a, a fresh start. I'm sure you probably get folks asking about that all the time. Yeah, there's definitely nothing to be ashamed of when it comes to bankruptcy. Um, things happen that's out of your control. Um, the system really isn't there to help you. It really does work against you. Um, I know that sounds like a conspiracy, but unfortunately, the, the laws and regulations out there really do not support the middle class or the poor. It doesn't. And, you know, I'll just say one example for me, because um, I did file bankruptcy, and it was at a time where I had a, a huge savings I put aside because mm -hmm. I was going to close my business and have a child. And that money was supposed to hold me through that time before I found another job and was ready to go back to work and also pay for my medical bills for the pregnancy. So I, had, I was so responsible. You've had done everything. the right thing. I did you the right planned. thing. Yeah, I planned, like, planned everything. And then the Great Recession hit. And I had a, I think it was like maybe $20,000 credit card. And they decided to increase the interest rate on it. Even though I was on time with my payments because I had saved up my money to make all my payments through that time. And that credit card quickly just spiraled out of control because of interest, even though I kept paying it. The payments went from like $30 to like over 1000 a month. And it went through all my savings. And at that point, I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, what we hope folks will do is we'll call Legal Aid and we'll help you out. Um, bankruptcy had a stigma, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. If you talk to the older generation, they just, they feel like they can't do that. They have a responsibility to pay their debt. Mm -hmm. And while we understand that, bankruptcy was created to lift that crushing debt burden and give you a fresh start. It's there. Folks should take, avail you know, take advantage of it mm -hmm. if they can. And we help folks uh, do that at Legal Aid. First of all, uh, bankruptcy is not going to take away your homestead. That's protected. Bankruptcy is probably not going to interfere with your car, especially if you're making payments on it. Um, there are a lot of rumors out about bankruptcy that are just not true. 
So if anyone is out there and feels like they need bankruptcy, you know, they should call legal aid. We'll give you the facts, and then you can make an informed choice about bankruptcy. But it definitely is a lifesaver for a lot of the lower income clients that we see. So any, any final thoughts on the bankruptcy and debt issue? Yeah, I would definitely say that it's very important who you vote for because that situation that had put me into bankruptcy, and by the way, I was responsible with that credit card too, it was for my business. It wasn't for getting my nails done or anything like that. Um, that situation has changed, laws had changed, where I think it was Elizabeth Warren who pushed for that credit cards can't just change the interest rate on you for debt that you already had on the card. So now the laws have changed. So now if they do raise the interest rate, it has to be in anything future, not in anything past. And also the payments too, they couldn't just charge you whatever they wanted to charge you for that month. That's also controlled by the new laws too. So, you know, That's good to thanks know. to someone like her, you know, some laws were made in order to protect people from going into that situation. That's good to know. Yeah. Thanks for all that information. It's really great to share with our community. We're gonna take a short break Let's share a few messages from our generous sponsors. We'll be back with more of the Domino Effect after this. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families. Until all our families have homes. Until all our parents are cared for. will be here. Can health insurance help cure loneliness? Can it take care of your best friend too? Or hold your hand for nine months? Can it be there for you at 3 a.m.? Or inspire you to go the extra mile? We think so. Which is why every day we ask ourselves, what else can health insurance do? Come find out. Welcome back to The Domino Effect. I have Commissioner Benilla with me, and we're going to jump into our next topic, which is evictions and foreclosures. Can you tell me, Commissioner, since the pandemic has started, what are you seeing in the community as far as housing issues? Well, the biggest one are, is having seniors come to my office and tell me that their rent is going up, they don't know what to do, they're going to be homeless because they can't find another place to live. That is always tough. Um, at Legal Aid, obviously, we deal with low-income folks and fixed income is a problem when you're facing rent increases like we've seen lately. Um, and I don't see an end to it. They're still doing some increases. It's very hard. A lot of folks are moving out of the area that we talk to. Um, the problem in Florida with our eviction laws is it happens so fast. If it's a non-payment eviction, you know, you get five days to respond. You have to pay your rent money into the court even to get a hearing. So it's, it's very tough. Those with limited income who are going month to month, uh, they end up being evicted by default for not being able to pay that money into the court registry system. So I'm sure you've had those cases as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who just can't find a place that will accept their application because they've been evicted. So it just makes the problem a lot harder for them once they get evicted. It really does. Um, folks may not be aware of this, but you can't seal or expunge an eviction on your record. As soon as it's filed in the court, it is permanent. It's part of the Sunshine Laws in Florida, so it's there. Anytime you go to apply for a new place, they're going to pull that on a background check. So it's very, very difficult for folks to find it. Um, we do uh, a lot of negotiating with landlords to try and avoid evictions if possible because it's such a lasting mark on their record, especially for seniors who have a limited income plus an eviction, it makes it very hard. Um, homeowners also are being affected. Uh, have you seen foreclosure issues as well? I've definitely seen foreclosure rates go up. Yeah, 
Foreclosures actually uh, were not too bad during the pandemic, according to the court records, but they've really taken off since January. We're seeing a lot of HOA foreclosures. Um, foreclosures are always very tough on those with limited income because unfortunately, it usually takes money to get out of the foreclosure. Although folks should be aware there are new laws and you should ask your lenders if you're in, in trouble with your mortgage, there are mandated refinance options or loan modifications that are available. Um, is there anything else in affordable housing going on in the county? Well, we do have our affordable housing action plan. Um, I feel that there's a lot of flaws in it though. Um, I know in our previous segment, I talked about how the system works against us. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I think that's unfortunately another area where it's not, we're creating affordable housing, but who it's really benefiting again is the people who's making the problem, the developers, the, the builders, because it's just giving them more money. And then there's just the way the system works. And it's just, I just learned some of this more recently that there's ways that these affordable housing complexes can turn into a for-profit market rate complex earlier than what their contract is, which I thought was just crazy. That does seem to be a problem. Uh, we have a shortage of available units. We run across it all the time when we're dealing with folks. Even if they are getting out of an apartment um, right now, what we're seeing is a lot of folks faced with those huge rent increases. So they're getting you know, non-renewals, um, they're getting kicked out, and there are just not enough units available for them. A lot of folks are having to move out of state, move in with family. Are you seeing a lot of folks that have to cohabitate? Oh, there's this really sad story that I got through email um, from someone, and they were sharing how their, and this was a couple of years ago, their rent had gone up and they couldn't afford it. So they thought that they would just live in their car for a month or two to be able to save up money to be able to get into another apartment. Because just to get into an apartment, you're paying thousands of dollars. It's just the deposit, the first, last months. And so she thought that she could save up that money to be able to do that. And then the application fees, there's just, it costs a lot of money just to find an apartment. Well, that two months turned into two years living in her car. And she was a government employee, by the way, wow. and wasn't getting paid enough to pay rent, living on the streets out of her car. She had a friend who was a single mom, and she had also had her rent went up. And so she went to live with her, just sleeping on her floor to help out with her rent. And then she got evicted because she couldn't, the rent just kept going up and they couldn't afford it. So then the single mom with kids was homeless too and she had to send her kids to different homes so that they weren't living in the streets. And she was also a government worker, which just breaks my heart, you know, being someone who is an elected official who employs government workers that they're not getting paid enough to pay the rents that are happening in our county. Yeah, that is a tough situation, and I've heard stories like that from a lot of our clients. The ones that really, um, you know. And they work. It's not like yeah, they don't have a job. They're we, working full-time. We call full -time. them, you know, the working poor because mm -hmm. uh, income is just not increasing at a rate they can afford basic housing in this area. Yeah. Um, hopefully there will be some relief with affordable housing in the near future. But until then, we have to deal with folks that are uh, being evicted, and that makes it doubly hard to find somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And even if they're evicted, um, there's not a lot of resources out there for them. Folks should reach out to the rental assistance programs if they're in trouble or get, you know, getting behind on the rent. Reach out early. Uh, there's still money available, so I think it's important that they reach out early. But landlords do not have to participate and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we see a lot of landlords where the money is available or approved and it's coming, but landlords know that they can just get rid of that tenant and charge five to $800 more for a unit. So it's not worth their time to wait. I'm sure you've seen folks in that situation. Well, and that is the problem. I call it greed. <laughs> so greed is really the, 
It's one of the seven deadly sins, and unfortunately, that's the huge, the biggest problem that we have is that people are being greedy and hurting a lot of other people because of it. Yes, unfortunately, but if you need something, hopefully they'll reach out to Legal Aid or reach out to your office. Uh, I know we get referrals from your office all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the worst thing you can do, you know, whether it's consumer debt or housing, is to do nothing and to wait until it's too late for us to help you or do something and intervene. So any final thoughts on the housing issues? I'll just say it's, it's very difficult trying to help people sometimes because we, we try to give them the resources and they don't qualify. There's also that problem. There's people who are just in what I call the donut hole. I know that's a term that they've used in, right. in Medicare um, or Medicaid. Sorry, I get the, the two mixed up a lot. Um, but there's like a donut hole when it comes to getting assistance because they, they make too much money but not enough to pay the consumer debt issue that they're in. Thanks for that information. I'm sure our uh, Orange County residents will appreciate it. We're going to take a short break. And our final topic is going to be human trafficking and domestic violence. Tough topics, but we'll be right back to talk about them. Can health insurance help cure loneliness? Can it take care of your best friend too? Or hold your hand for nine months? Can it be there for you at 3 a.m.? Or inspire you to go the extra mile? We think so. Which is why every day we ask ourselves, what else can health insurance do? find out. He uh, physically, mentally, and um, abused me, sexually abused me. Everything that you can possibly think of, he did to me. I finally opened up to somebody after two, three years of being in that pain, and that, that's really what helped me really just opening up and telling the story, and that person really invested in me going that step further. Welcome back. I'm joined today by Commissioner Bonilla. Our next topic is a tough one. It's human trafficking and domestic violence. So, Commissioner, we know that this is going on in the community. Can you tell me what your office has seen as far as trafficking or domestic violence issues? So what I try to do is try to get the information out there to people on what's going on and what they could do to protect their families. Um, I did have this one story of this this mom who actually lost her daughter to these individuals who were trying to steal her inheritance. Um, not exactly human trafficking that you think of, but it still falls under that. And, you know, it's just really an issue that it's hard that we, well, I'll, I'll just say I'm glad I don't have any girls. Um, I never wanted girls because if I had one, she'll be like Rapunzel and stuck in the house and I wouldn't let her out. Um, I was blessed with two boys instead, so I'm very happy about that. Um, but even boys you have to be careful with. And I'm always trying to make sure that what they're doing on social media, that they're not talking to these strangers that are predators out to try to get them or meet with them or, you know, entrap them. That's interesting that you say that. I think it's very important for folks to understand that it is not you know, just a certain type of person that gets uh, abused this way. It can be anyone of any background. So it's a, it's a very wide ranging, you got to protect your sons and daughters, um, you know, it's, it's a tough uh, topic for the community, but we need to talk about it and get the message out there. Yeah, definitely. It could happen at your workplace, your boss, you know, if you, if you want this, if you want this type of schedule, you know, it's called sexual harassment, but you know, it's it's also human trafficking. Um, they have the the labor trafficking. Um, when we have immigrants who are here, 
and what happens to immigrants who may be working, let's say, on a farm, um, the, the farmer would then keep in their passports or hold on to their passports or visas in order to get them to continue working. And then they feel like they, that they can't report it to the police or they'll get in trouble. And, you know, that's trafficking as well. It is. There's all kinds of trafficking. There's sex trafficking, which mm -hmm. I think most people think about. But there is the forced labor trafficking where, you know, they come in, um, maybe it's agricultural work, or maybe they come in as domestic help. And, you know, if you don't have your passport, your papers, and maybe you owe the person for bringing you into the country, you're basically facing indentured servitude. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very tough. Um, has your office gotten a lot of uh, calls about any of those type of things? Well, my office has mostly gotten calls from our single moms who have been able to leave a domestic violence situation but are having a hard time getting by. Mm -hmm. They're not able to find housing that's affordable and they're having a hard time paying their bills. Yeah, that's, it goes back to the consumer debt, the housing, if you add in domestic violence. I think the pandemic has increased rates of domestic violence. Um, we're forced to be in, in the house with folks you know, closer it makes it a lot tougher, and we're seeing a rise in domestic violence. We're seeing a rise in divorces. So I think it's important folks know to reach out. You can call someone for help. You know, if you're being abused, call the sheriff, call, you know, and make a report. Um, follow up, call out for resources like legal aid or domestic violence shelter. So I think it's important folks do that as soon as they make the decision that they need to get away. Yeah, there's also emotional abuse and domestic violence, um, which a lot of people may not know that they're even going through. And so if you're feeling un uncomfortable, if you're feeling pressured, if you're feeling like the person is making you feel like you're, you're not worthy or ugly or anything like that, you know, that's emotional abuse. Your spouse is supposed to make you feel better about yourself, not worse. It's interesting that you say that. Um, we see a lot of the times it is psychological abuse. It doesn't have to be physical. I think the tendency is for folks to say, well, it's just, you know, it's just the mental abuse. Or f That's still abuse. It's still a valid reason to ask for help. And it is wrapped up, you know, maybe they feel trapped financially. They may not have resources. And what we try to do at Legal Aid is unravel that ball and figure out what we can do for the housing, what we can do for the consumer debt. You know, maybe they need a fresh start with a bankruptcy. But we try to get things like injunctions for protection. We can help them with divorces, child custody issues. So there is help out there. Um, unfortunately, Florida seems to rank high on the list for trafficking and domestic violence issues. But there is help available. Is there a particular um, uh, thing that you're seeing as far as a story from one of your constituents? Um, just the ones that are having a hard time finding a place. Yeah. But I'll say um, finances are very important because there's, you know, they could get you trapped into a relationship when it comes to finances. So it's very important that when you do get into a relationship, it's important that you stay in control of your finances. Um, I heard that finances is like maybe the number two reason people get divorced. <laughs> so there's really no good, good one way to do it that's going to guarantee you don't get divorced, <laughs> unfortunately. That's um, true. But if you're in control of your own finances, if you end up in an abusive situation, it's easier for you to leave. That's very true. One of the hardest things we have to do is the detangling of the finances. Mm -hmm. if, if you're joint on a lot of things, it makes it harder to separate. So maybe... You know, the first year or two, maybe feel it out, don't join everything, because it is very hard and it's a legal process for detangling those finances. And it, it can mean that you have to have a bankruptcy in the end when, if you hadn't, you know, had the joint assets or a lot of times it's uh, financial abuse as well, where the, the abuser is making you take out credit cards or take out loans. Um, that's always tough. So if you're in those situations, reach out, talk to somebody. You know, legal aid's here to help. We're certainly not the only uh, avenue. If you're in DV situations, call the sheriff. Um, 
Is there anything on the horizon for DV that you're working on or trafficking? Well, I've been kind of busy with the housing <laughs> <laughs> situation right now. Um, but I will definitely say with the human trafficking, what I've asked for and would like to see is more signage in our airport. Actually, we don't have any signage. So I would like to actually see, see signage. Some. <laughs> see some. Uh, if you go into other airports around the country, they do have some signs in the hallways when you walk through. And there's also some signs in the back of the, the bathroom stalls, the door. Right. Um, that lets people know it's illegal. And if you see something suspicious, here's a phone number that you can call. Um, so it's, it's definitely an issue here in Orange County. I believe we're the, the third, Florida's the third in the country. Orange County's the third in the state. And yet um, a lot of the officials will say that they don't know where those numbers come from. We really, it's not really that bad. But, you know, we do have Disney here, and we are supposed to be the happiest place on, in the world. And I think that's why they don't want to really address it the way we should, because it's not supposed to be happening here. But I think because we are a vacation destination where we have a lot of children who come here and a lot of travelers, I believe that's the reason why we are having such an issue. Definitely awareness is key and getting the word out is, is definitely something that we want to do more of. So hopefully we'll be able to get those signs up in the airport before too long. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you for coming on today on the domino effect and sharing your thoughts and what you're seeing out in the community. We really appreciate your support at Legal Aid and I'm sure everyone in Orange County appreciates your support as well. So thank you for coming on. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was really a joy. The Legal Aid Society has existed for over 60 years, providing legal representation to clients on issues similar to those discussed in this episode. It is imperative that the community knows, when faced with legal troubles, you are and should still be able to receive high quality legal representation and access to justice regardless of your income. If you reside in Orange County District 5 and have questions about your local laws and regulations, you may contact Commissioner Emily Bonilla's office by calling 407-836-7350. If you are seeking assistance on a legal matter, you may contact the Legal Aid Society law firm by calling 407-841-8310. The Legal Aid Society is a nonprofit law firm that relies greatly on volunteerism and donations. For more information on how you can help the organization keep its doors open, visit www.legalaidocba.org. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Domino Effect, and remember, perpetual goodness goes a long way. Mm -hmm.